Hi guys, it's Ariel here from Fix My Box, and today I want to talk to you about the three different types of 0% tax codes in QuickBooks. So there are three types. One is exempt, the other is zero rated, and lastly, out of scope. So let's start with zero rated and exempt. So zero rated supplies you charge 0% of HST, but you can claim ITCs against that type of sale or service. With exempt, you do not charge HST, but you also cannot claim ITCs against that sale. So what are some examples of zero rated supplies? So some examples would be groceries another example which is the main one that this is used for is if you are selling your services to someone outside of canada so let's say you are a digital marketing person and you are freelancing you landed a client in the u.s then this is the tax code that you would use when you are sending your client in the u.s an invoice so other supplies would be, you know, groceries, agricultural products, feminine hygiene products, and again, exports. So that's what I said. Like if you're char like um, sending an invoice to a client in the U.S., you are charging them a zero rated sales tax, right? The next one is exempt. So this only applies to certain types of things in Canada. So make sure that you are not using this unless you have a ruling or you know for sure that you are exempt from charging HSD. But again, you cannot claim ITCs against this type of income. So an example of this would be a sale of housing that is a primary residence, long-term rentals, music lessons. So just make sure that when you are charging exempt supplies, it is actually exempt income. So here is an example of how this works, like how the difference is really in terms of zero rated and exempt supplies. So pretend you charge your client a thousand dollars and you do not add HST because the client is in the US. But then you paid for $113 worth of office supplies, so $100 in office supplies, and then $13 in HSD to accomplish the task slash service. So you can claim $13 as ITCs or input tax credits against that. So that's the reason why you it says you may be eligible to claim ITCs. So you can claim the $13 that you paid for as an ITC. So with exempt, you charge your client $1,000, no HST. Same thing, you paid $100 uh, for the you know, office supplies and $13 worth of HST. But again, since it is exempt and not zero rated, you cannot claim the $13 as ITCs. You have to expense the $13. So when I say expense instead of... Um, entering it like this so i'm gonna show you guys so let's pretend that this 41 dollars was the zero rated type of office supplies right again zero rated income so if this was that you can put office expenses and then you can claim the 13 percent but for exempt, since you cannot claim it, same office expense, you have to put exempt. And so the full $41 will then be an expense. A portion of it will not be ITCs. That's the main difference between these two things. And the third one, out of scope, if you can see here, there's no sales tax for out of scope, right? The CRA doesn't discuss this. So out of scope is actually kind of a QuickBooks tax code. It's not a real tax code. So the reason out of scope is used 
is when you are depositing money to the business as the business owner. Let's say you're lending your company money, then you will have to use out of scope as the sales tax code. The reason why is because out of scope will not show up in your HST return while exempt and zero rated will. So if you gave your company, let's say a thousand eight hundred dollars and you know, you were a bit lax and you were thinking, Oh, I can just use whatever zero rated tax code there is. If you actually enter it as exempt sales, it will show up on your HST return and inflate your sales in your HST return by a thousand eight hundred dollars. And that is why we use out of scope whenever the owner of the company puts money into the company or takes money out of the company because it does not affect the HST return. So any money you put in or take out should not affect the HST return if you are just loaning your company money because again, it's not a sale or an expense. So that is why we have the out of scope tax code. So. A little tidbit I'm going to give you guys because I see a lot of people make these mistakes with meals and entertainment. So meals and entertainment expenses. You can only claim 50% of the meals and entertainment expenses. Meaning if you have a thousand dollars, if you paid for a thousand dollars, let's say worth of catering for your company Christmas party. So that's going to be a thousand plus 130 HST. You will notice that when you are buying food, not basic groceries, right? Food like you're eating out, it has HST, but your groceries do not. So that's why there is HST with meals and entertainment. However, you're only allowed to claim 50% of the meals and entertainment expenses and also 50% of the ITCs or input tax credits. So if you paid for $1,000 worth of food and then there is $130 of HST on that, so that's 1130 the portion that is the HST, you can only claim half of it as an ITC. And this is going to be very difficult to do if you're trying to adjust this at the end of the year. So the best thing to do with this so that you are abiding by you know the CRA rules is to make a meals and entertainment sales tax code. So the way you do that is you just go to taxes, sales tax, click manage sales tax, click add a custom rate, and then let's name this meals and entertainment. You only pay this on purchases, right? You do not collect this on sales since this is a special thing just for meals and entertainment. Account is liability and show the tax amount on the return line. Input tax credits. Click add. Once that's done, just click done. And then we will just refresh this page. This is a dummy account from QuickBooks. This isn't a real account. So it takes a little bit. Um, there's kind of a delay when the sales tax code shows up. So let's pretend that this hotel, let's say that this is a meals and entertainment expense. So instead of claiming the whole HSD 13%, just make sure that you claim six and a half percent on any meals and entertainment expenses. Again, this is because only half of the meals and entertainment is allowed to be claimed. So only half of the meals and entertainment ITCs is also allowed to be claimed on your tax return. So I hope this shed some light on this issue and I hope that you guys will be doing this meals and entertainment six and a half percent tax code again because it's very difficult to adjust it at the end of the year and it's best that you do this from the very beginning. So if you have any questions just please um, just let me know and comment down below but I hope that I shed some light on the difference between exempt, zero rated, and out of scope because I know that it's very confusing because they're all zero. But again, there is a difference between the three of them and it will affect your HSD return if you choose the wrong one. So once again, this is Ariel from Fix My Books, helping you fix your books.
Hey guys, I hope you liked the video and please don't forget to subscribe so you can tune in to the next videos in our tutorial series here on YouTube. And once again, this is Ariel from Fix My Books and I'm here to help you fix your books. <laughs>